Hi guys, Ricky Pope here, and this week on the Christian Urge Unite podcast, I talk with Lucas Pinkard and Danley Gibson of the Reverend and the Reprobate podcast, plus scripture and nerdy news as always, and we'll get to all of that right after this. Over the past two years, I have gotten to know Lucas and Danley of the Reverend and the Reprobate podcast. Uh, they have had the opportunity to interview some amazing guests that they say they have no right to interview. In our interview today, we talk about that as well as some of their favorite or most interesting podcast guests, as well as their early years as traveling Christian musicians. But before we get to that, let's do some scripture. Let's read Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Just as Lucas and Danley acknowledge that they don't deserve the privilege of interviewing such remarkable guests, and, uh, you know, I have the same situation here, um, we don't deserve the opportunities we've been given to us, nor do we deserve the grace of God. However, as Paul states in this passage, that is the very nature of grace. It's not earned through our own merit, but rather it is a gift of God's kindness and generosity and we can't take credit for it. Now, let's look at some nerdy news. Looks like the upcoming Alien film, currently titled Alien Romulus, is set to begin filming in February. The film is being directed by District 9 filmmaker Neil Blomkamp, who has previously spoken about his passion for the Alien franchise and his desire to make a new film in the series. The film is said to be a direct sequel to James Cameron's Aliens, that will be the second film in the series, and will ignore the events of the subsequent Alien films. Sigourney Weaver, who starred as Ellen Ripley in the original Alien film, will reprise her role in the new film. It's also rumored that Michael Biehn, who played Corporal Hicks in Aliens, will also return for the new film. Um, the plot and other details of the film have not been revealed yet, but it is expected to be a return to the franchise's horror-style roots. The trailer for the third season of The Mandalorian drew a record 83.5 million views in the first 24 hours after premiering January 16th during the NFL wildcard playoff game. Uh, the show's creator, John Favreau, has stated that the third season will continue to explore the world of the Mandalorian, as we expected. Uh, Pedro Pascal returns as Din Djarin, the, the Mandalorian, who travels the galaxy with his foundling Grogu. Uh, the trailer focuses on familiar faces, and it looks like we'll be seeing much more of the planet Mandalore in this season. The series will deal with issues that were shown in the Book of Boba Fett, so if you haven't watched that, you might want to check it out. The Mandalorian Season 3 debuts March 1st. A feature-length documentary is being produced about the legendary film composer John Williams, who is behind some of the most recognized movie themes of all times. Amblin Television and Imagine Documentaries are in the early stages of production on the documentary, 
Williams has composed the music and served as musical director for more than 100 films, including greats like all nine Star Wars films, uh, the first three Harry Potter films, JFK, Born on the Fourth of July, and Far and Away. He has a nearly 50-year artistic partnership with Spielberg, which includes films like Indiana Jones, Jaws, Schindler's List, E.T., Jurassic Park, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and so many more. Williams is a five-time Academy Award winner and the most nominated living person in the history of the Oscars. I am very much looking forward to this film. Well, Lucas and Danley reached out to me a little over two years ago to be on the Reverend and the Reprobate podcast to share about Christian Nerds Unite and who we were and to share about my wife's amazing journey of having a total artificial heart. Since that first meeting, we have become really good friends. Uh, we chat on a regular basis and uh, they even joined us for the Marvel Universe role playing game play test episodes we did. Uh, they also took over the show one week last year, if you heard that, um, while I was in the hospital. If you missed the episode, it was something to watch, and I'll put a link down in the show notes. Uh, I felt it was high time I had them on this show formally so they could share their journey with you. Lucas and Danley, it is so great to have you on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast, finally. No doubt. <laughs> It's, this must be a real pleasure for you, Ricky. <laughs> it is a literal dream come true. It is. Yeah. We've oft talked about the dreams we've had of being on the Christian mm -hmm. Nerds Unite podcast because our podcast goes out to tens of people and Ricky's goes out to tens of tens as in hundreds. Yeah. Multiplied. There you go. By one. Well, like discipleship. I guess technically you've, Unite podcast. you've both technically already been on the show before uh, because you were, you were on the uh, the... Marvel Universe role playing game play test podcast. Yes. We had our D6s. Yes, we did. rolling all and them we, sweet D6s. We did take over an episode of this podcast for Ricky. Mm -hmm. That is true. Some months that ago. is true. Yeah. That that was an experience. <laughs> you're, you're telling us. <laughs> we do apologize to Ricky's regular audience for our takeover that one afternoon. Friends were lost. Yeah. Followers were lost. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> Memories were made. <laughs> Wives were disappointed. All of the above. Well, um, it's great to have the Reverend and the Reprobate on the show finally, uh, officially. Pleasure. And uh, so tell me a little bit about the Reverend and the Reprobate. How did this show come about? You, 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 which one of us? Well, You're going to have to direct questions to us. Otherwise, we're going to end up talking over each other and... That it's makes for great different. content if you listen to our show, because that's what you expect. And both of us have different answers. <laughs> yeah, and but with Ricky's show that is well-formatted and thought out... You should start. ...the normal stuff for us may not work. All right, I'll start. So in uh, 2017, um, we our church was approached to doing some podcasting stuff by a friend of mine who was big into the podcasting business and um, did it for a lot of corporations. And so I had started helping him with some content creation and stuff on that end. Mm. In 2019, we really felt led at the church that I pastor to invest into um, online and, uh, and streaming uh, sort of mediums as a way to to tell people about the gospel and to, mm. and to teach people and that kind of thing. And so when the pandemic happens, we're sort of uniquely equipped, even as a small church, to be able to do those kinds of things. Well, we get to the summer of the pandemic. We haven't we, – we've just started having in-person meetings again, but most of them have been outside. Um, I'm looking for a new creative outlet because being inside is getting me stir-crazy. We've got all of this awesome podcasting equipment and media equipment that we have up at the church. And I was like, you know what? Uh, the only way that we're going to get better at this or that I'm going to get better at it is uh, to create something where I'm forced to build my chops and uh, and do do something that's that's outside of what I normally do. Well, one of the things I really wanted to do is talk to uh to talk to people that were, were authors and you know, I had like this list of people that would be like more or less like my dream interviews. And I was like, how in the world can I talk to these folks? And I was like, well, um, if I had a podcast, it would be able to do that. It would stretch me creatively. It kind of checks all these boxes. And then my next thought is who would I want to do this with? 
Um, and we had done some things like my wife was not interested at all. She is, she's a wonderful singer. Like she's great on stage. Um, but she has no interest in, in doing podcasts. She has no interest in listening to podcasts, especially ours. Um, <laughs> and so uh, that's, that's that, really, that's, that's not really bad true. at times. Mine too. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like and, same. And occasionally same. I say some things that, yeah, like we had her on, uh, or we had both of our wives on an episode and one of the things we do is we have this tagline that says, you know, uh, all of our guests read it and say, um, I'm so-and-so, and this is why you should never listen to the reverend and the reprobate. And my wife's reason is you should never listen because I don't. Like that is just <laughs> I mean, pure honesty. So as, as I'm thinking about who I can do this with, who do I know that I can engage with creatively, um, who is uh, more or less going to be like savvy enough to be able to work off the cuff, is, is quick enough intellectually, and also – um, we'll take, even though we want to do something that's, that's fun, we'll take everything seriously. And the only friend that I really had that came to mind that, really that one checked option. all of those boxes, um, was this guy named Jared. Uh, <laughs> and no, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was Dan Lee and he was the only one. Well, Dan, um, Dan Lee and I've been friends. We played music together. We've been friends for probably close to 20 years now, yeah. um, coming up on it. But we hadn't done anything regularly other than like maybe talk on the phone like once a month or something like that in years. Mm. So I was a little skeptical of whether or not he would be down to do it. So I started by recruiting his wife and saying, hey, Heather, I have this idea. Do you think Danley would do it? And her response to me is, I'll make him. <laughs> and so like at that point, I was like, all right, sweet. Um, and so then I called Danley. We talked about it and – and. Uh, you know, for me, as, as far as like the rest for me, the, the rest is kind of history. But from like your end, how did it get started? Yeah, from my perspective, it was something Yeah, I've always wanted to do a podcast. I've always, you know, I've, I've watched several. Jared, by the way, is who Danley originally wanted to do a podcast with. It wasn't with. a podcast. There was something else totally different. You always bring this up. <laughs> but uh, totally different. Uh, so I, I have always, you know, been interested in, in this. And from my perspective, it was during the pandemic. I was definitely depressed and getting fatter at home. <laughs> Sitting down, doing nothing helpful. Right. And you called me. I did. And slowly tricked me into joining your church, which is yeah. exactly what happened. <laughs> it was, I, yeah, it was a slow burn. I, I'm yep. sure that you had I, – I just feel like you had this well, ulterior to, motive of to let's be do this fair, fun thing you guys and then had, I'm going to trick him to you join. You had joined the church prior to the podcast. Yeah, because you I, – I looked this up. You all officially I don't remember that. joined the church in April. We didn't start the podcast until June. I don't think that's true. That it is. I'll, I need. I'll, I need proof. I'm, but I'm look but not right, right now. now. But yeah. So it was. It was a fun thing, you know, for me during the pandemic that started. And, and like he said, you know, there was there's some people that I would have loved to have talked to. Some of them, I thought for sure, there's no way, and we were able to get them and talk to them and make friends. And yeah, it's been a it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work. Uh, what, what's weird is now that there's all these people that we really wanted to talk because the tagline for our show is two best friends interviewing people that they have no business talking to, <laughs> which is really accurate. And there are some people that we really wanted on and now they want to come on and we're like, we're kind of tired of talking to you. Like you don't really have anything else <laughs> to offer. Our show. That's not true. Um, no, that's Jeremy not true. Nunez, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's how we got started. Yeah. I think it's a good representation. Yeah. So, so Dan Lee, where did the name come from? <laughs> Him. Yeah. Uh, when we were talking about it, he pitched the idea because, you know, we were brainstorming and what are some funny ideas? And, yeah, I want it to be, you know, I, I, I like comedy. I like humor. So I wanted something along those lines. He said, what about Reverend and Reprobate? And I went, done. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Like, I, I think we probably spent 15 seconds on it. Yeah, it was. You had obviously done some pre-thinking. It was no time. It really, it, it came out of the nature of our relationship. Yeah. Is what was I, because one of the other groups that we've had on, like we mentioned, we had our wives on. We also had our moms on. Yeah. And both of our moms kind of had the same feeling about the other one. My mom pulled out a gun, too. <laughs> And she confronted me and confronted me. I mean, she didn't pull a gun on people, but she pulled it out to confront <laughs> this gun. once and for all. Where did this gun come from? Yeah. And she wanted to know. And Danley continued to lie to her, even on our show. <laughs> but <laughs> <that's>, so, <laughs> our show, we're, we film in Texas. Like, this is, this is pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. Like his mom got off of her horse and came and pulled out a gun mm -hmm. and wanted to know the real meaning behind it. And As you do. You know, and, yep, she's, now she's, and she still doesn't know. Yeah, back in her hip holster, <laughs> um, so on her in, in the prison yard. So we uh, 
we started our our friendship playing a band together and then we but we were both really young so we ended up at at each other's parents houses and i think both of our moms kind of had this same sort of um skepticism around the other one like my kid like they know what they did in order to like they prayed for their kid and they had us in church and they made Mm -hmm. sure we were walking the straight and narrow and then they met the other one and they were like i don't know that you're going to be the best influence on my son and so that's really for me that's where the genesis came from is because like both of our moms were like oh no i don't know if my sweet baby should be hanging out Mm -hmm. with this idiot um (laughs) And so that that was kind of kind of where it came from. And I thought that Danley would know what reprobate meant, uh, which is I did. Yeah, it it was awesome because you laughed although, at it immediately. Although I didn't get quite the the spiritual aspect. Of oh the, yeah, you know, one is elected and one is not. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. You this had, is kind of a th- shot at some of our Calvinist friends. Yeah, this is yeah, something that, sure. I, that I learned yeah. throughout, yes. and it, uh-huh. made, it made it funnier. Yeah, yeah. So. There but you yeah, go. Essentially, the, the it's, there you go, it's James yin, White. It's yin and yang <laughs> podcast. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what it's yin and yang for Christians. Now, uh, you know, it's called the Reverend and the Reprobate. Correct. Now, my understanding is mm-hmm. okay. Now, there are some things that are kind of running gags on your show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, one of those running gags is that Dan Lee's mom is in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes, that's true. That where, is a running gag. Where did that come from? <laughs> well, the answer is is in a song. It is. It's from a song. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we, when I intro the show, one of our our like heroes of radio is this guy named Mike Reiner. Mike's oh, been yeah. on the show a couple of times. Um, he's a he's a Texas Radio Hall of Famer, and anybody in the radio business knows Mike. He's got this iconic growl to his voice. The dude's absolutely amazing. But uh, one of the things that really stood out to us is that he had these ways that he would intro people that were incredible. Um, he intro to the show that he was on for 20 something years with this whole long like diatribe and he did it one time then he memorized it you know you need to heed to tricep mill about smartly around the premises and on and on and then he had these ways that he would intro the guys on the show that were really funny and I was trying to the think most of abrasive, like, over yeah, the top personality you know, radio personality all this kind of stuff and so I was thinking like what would be a funny way to intro Dan and like, what could I do that could be like a running, a running gag? Well, I was and listening. And also makes my mom mad at the same time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anything we can do to upset our moms or our wives, we try to do on the show because again, they don't listen, so they'll never know about it. As you do. Um, but we, uh, we were doing some work around the house, and I've got this like outlaw country playlist, and this verse from David Allen Coe comes on, and it says, you know, I was drunk the day my mom got out of prison, and I went to pick her up in the rain. And so one day on the show, and I was like, and here's a guy who was drunk the day his mom got out of prison. It's the reprobate Dan Gibson. And that's what started the gag about his mom being in prison, which has now gone on for over two years. And not only that, but I had family members that should have known better. Like, <laughs> my, like, yeah, like, my, mom's, like my mom's <laughs> sister called after listening to the episode and she yeah. said what happened to Majin? I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> we we like made up a reason that yeah, she had like, gone into prison. She, said, she got in trouble with the law, and I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, we we made this up is some, your sister. We made up some story about how she got like in a fight in the front yard yeah. of your house, and they were like, ah, uh, it was just believable enough that. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, she is not a fan. Um, <laughs> actually, she, she she's coming she, around she on it. it. I've got a picture, and we haven't done this yet, but I, B- I had both, it. both of our moms like a little, a little combat. Yes, yeah, they do. They like, uh, they like a they're, light. They're, they're Texas ladies. Yeah, and and hyper sarcastic, and they. I mean, they raised us, right? We're homeschooled kids that don't have terrible you know, social skills because I don't our, identify as a homeschool kid. Our, our moms, <laughs> our moms were were like that. So. Um, we have this picture, and I've never. I'll have to see if I can find it because I had it, and I wanted to put it on a T-shirt because your mom was coming to like a Christmas Eve thing. Yeah, and it's a picture of his mom, and it's got one of the imprisoned boards on it, and <laughs> and uh, like for the reasons why it was like um, snuff, like dip and snuff, and other stuff or something like that. And we've made up a lot of stories over, yeah, over the past yeah, year yeah, or yeah. two, and and I showed it to Daniel, and he was like. 
I don't think she's ready for this yet, but like soon, soon we can, <laughs> we can pull that up soon. So I, I think we're going to make t-shirts and sell them in the store whenever we get that rolling. But yeah, it is uh, you, you did bust us. It is not true. It is not true. Uh-uh. But we are going to continue lying about it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she did bring a gun into the she studio. <laughs> into well, the studio. So it's not like she does have the outlaw spirit rage and mage. And I'm just yeah. thinking if, uh, if her, was it her sister? You said, yeah. If her sister said what happened, <laughs> true. there are yeah, things you me. guys don't know <laughs> that she does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There, there, there's, there's a possibility there. Yeah, it was so, not totally out of the question. <laughs> that's for sure. So one of the other things I've been hearing lately is mm-hmm. that Danley is on his way to becoming a, a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> This is just some more lie. just garbage that's on the show. Is, is, okay, this, so, is this a running gag or is this actually yeah, a, a thing? Yeah, yeah no. So Danley's <laughs> taken over some of the responsibilities in like helping lead worship at the church. Um, well, well, really, it started when, when you guys went to the hospital you know, with Levi. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going... So my, my son was born nine weeks premature. My wife was in the hospital mm-hmm. for 21 days. Prior to that, we got a whole episode about that. If and you want to listen to it, this is definitely unplanned and an yeah. emergency. Yeah, so, so, so I kind of went, you know, I went, okay, there's a lot of slack to pick up at the church. Let's yeah. do it. Let's make it happen. Mm-hmm. And then I just started <laughs> telling everyone that I'm basically a pastor now. And yes. That's, and that's from the stage at the church. That's <laughs> is where it started. <laughs> that's and also kind of where it ends. <laughs> <laughs> But I told everybody at work. I have told everyone in my life that, yeah. I'm, that I'm becoming a pastor. Yeah, he's, he's pastor. like, I'm. Uh, I'm pretty much I'm, a pastor I'm now. That line, because I know you can't. You can't uh, say that you're a member of the clergy, right? But you can say you're basically, <laughs> or that you're on your way, right? Yeah, it's like the. But it is a, it is an untruth. Yeah, you're, you're I'm, I'm like. S- the, I'm sorry, Ricky. The advertisers for Pepsi, like, yeah, of course, you, nobody's going to get 700 but, million but, points for a Harrier jet. But, but you know, we'll say but it. Like and I said, see what happens. I'm at the church a lot. You are tricking me. Still, yeah. Oh, for sure. So we'll see how far you trick me. I mean, like there a, are ways like a for systematic you, theology book with your name on it. There, there are ways for you to become a licensed minister. That you could start doing weddings as well. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, the jo- uh, join Colton's brother's church and uh, <laughs> or uh, or what was it? Uh, David Baker went to the AMM. The American marital ministers thing. A, a friend of ours who's been on the show several times just got ordained online. Uh, so You're he right, could officiate a friend's wedding, but then but, he found out that it didn't even take in yeah. the state of Virginia because he wasn't associated with a real church. So <laughs> nah, pass, I pass on yeah. that. Uh, I, I'm I'm almost disappointed. Yeah, so because all of this stuff. I, I was going to ask yeah, everything once Ricky he becomes, said about our show is untrue. <laughs> once he becomes so, <laughs> Every, everything is interesting about our show is a lie. <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead. We're, we're listening. I, I'm a little disappointed because I was going to ask. So once he becomes a a, a minister. Are you going to change the name of the show? The Reverend and the no, Reverend not a Bait? Chance. Yeah, the Reverend and the Reverend Bait. <laughs> That's what it would change to. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. Well, uh, so you mentioned the band. Mm-hmm. I want to hear a little bit more about this because I haven't, I haven't heard much about this. You guys okay. used to tour in mm-hmm. a band. We did, yeah. In, in fact, every, every intro that, we, that you hear is us playing. Yeah, so they, yeah, they all of the our, intro to our to yeah, our uh, our show, the intro to our show, we, we the record. transitions in between, um, all the, the music, yeah, the the interviews and stuff, the outro. That's all. Uh, that's all our stuff. Wow. So, yeah. w- w- so we save on we save on licensing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big bonus. Yeah. Then we give each other a high five, and we're like, "Oh, that's <laughs> awesome!" There's there's our royalty check for this week. <laughs> Using it for our podcast. <laughs> So when you're uh, when you were t- touring, what was that mm-hmm. all about? Were, were you a, a oh, Christian man. band or were you a secular band? What was that? It was um, the same. It was, <laughs> it was the same. Yeah, it was. It was, it was like the this. Reverend and the Reprobate Band. Yeah, it's it's pretty much what it was. Um, we most of the tours and stuff we went on were Christian. We did a lot of, of camps and things like that. We also uh, we followed around. This is a great story. Um, do you remember when we the followed disciple, disciple around? Yeah. yeah so. The Christian band Disciple, and this mm-hmm. is kind of where we started to get some notoriety. 
um, and where we got I get chewed out. Yeah. So we'll play with them a whole bunch. So we, <laughs> um, so we were a lo- for a long time we were uh, a local um, like Christian rock band, but they would let us into a lot of the secular venues because they liked our music, mm. right? Like they didn't really care. Uh, we we get yelled I, at. I just several, wanted to play rock and roll. I just liked the music. Yeah, we get yelled at um, uh, at a couple of different venues because, like, we were headlining and we told them, "Hey, look, we I, we got to play at church in the morning. Like, we need to be out of here by like one or something like that." And so, <laughs> like, our audience asked for an encore one night, and I was like, "Listen, heathens, we got to be at church." <laughs> In like six <laughs> hours, all right? So you're going to get one song. And they started like yelling at us. And I was like, no, have you not listened to like anything that we've played all night? Um, because it all like from a philosophical standpoint, right? Like that was – and this has always been something that's really been big to me. I've got a great answer to this. Go yeah, ahead. Let's sum this, up. This is something that's always been really big to me is the – is your worldview and your philosophy being communicated through your music, whether it's overtly Christian or not? That was something that was really important to me. Danley didn't really care about the lyrics, but he was really great at writing guitar parts. So mm. it, it meshed really well. What's your what's your sum up? I think to sum it up, you said you were your Christian band. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. We were also the type of band that would do – uh, DC talks. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesus freak. Right. We did a cover mm-hmm. of Jesus freak. Yep. And then in the bridge, we transitioned into inter Sandman. Inter Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd, and then we'd go back and then we would transition back and finish the song as in Jesus freak. And we yeah. would play that with youth and it was always the, the it, fan, yeah, the it was a favorite. huge hit. Um, so, so there was a mix, I and, guess. And we had some of the reviews of our, our shows and stuff because our philosophy, especially around our live show. And one of the reasons I think we gained a lot of notoriety in the Dallas area was because, and this is all built up to this disciple story, right? So it's a long story longer. Um, was we did a lot of stunts on stage. Yeah. Like the our our other guitar player um, would get up on my shoulders. We would run around on the stage for um, for his he guitar, would play solos. A guitar solo on your shoulders. Yeah. Um, I could do a backflip with my bass. We had a couple of like minor stunts where we would like create pyramids and stuff like that in front of. Um, the drum sets, and we've got. Uh, I'm, we'll send you some pictures of some of this stuff if you want to use them. But uh, one of the reviews in in the Dallas Observer called us the Crimson Falls Circus because the Crimson Falls was the name of our band because everything that we were doing was around creating this experience at our live shows because mm. we knew most of the people that were coming to our shows were high school and college kids. And if you're going to spend 15, 20, 25 bucks to go see a show, we wanted you to get your money's worth. And so whether we paid for or played for 15 people or, you know, in a couple of the venues, 1500 or more, we always made sure that the show was um, was the same as far as like mm. super high energy. We were selling out all the time. It, it was awesome. So that gets us to we and our get, facial hair was really cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. We had none back then. <laughs> <laughs> we're none. We're clean shaven. No, I had a Fu um, Manchu the one time. Oh, that's right. You did. <laughs> it was disgusting, but it was it was it's true that that happened. Um, so we we end up getting some notoriety locally, and so we get asked to be on the show where we open for Disciple and Decipher Down and and all these folks. And so we do um, the the club that we were playing at was packed out. It was probably fifteen hundred plus people that were there. Um, we brought down the house and just had this incredible incredible show. Well, the next night we see where they're playing. Um, Kevin Young from Disciple has told us like how you know how awesome he thought we were. You know, we did such a great job. We talked with a guy. I'm just I'll call him by his first name only, Lee, who was their manager, and uh, and Lee mentioned where they were playing at the next night. And he's like, Hey, do you want, you uh, you guys were really great. You know, we're playing we're playing here. Anytime we come to Dallas, we'd love for for you guys to play with us. And I was like, Okay, cool. So I call the venue, and I was like, Hey. Uh, I just want to make sure that you know we're coming. And they're like, who are you? It's like Crimson Fall. We've, we're have we on shows with Disciple and Decipher Down. We need to make sure you've got a spot for us. So we do this for the next, like, what, six weeks? Yeah, we need three mics. Yeah. And so, like, we would call ahead to the places that were on there. And we got to where we were a couple of weeks ahead. Um, and they know, like, all of these venues now know. They've got a spot for us in the green room. Like we've, they've got our rider now, and we're nobody, right? And so we're we're going, and we did uh, we did Dallas, we did Houston, we were in Mississippi, and we're following them on the last like six weeks of their tour. So these like twelve or thirteen shows that we end up. So like the second to last one, the manager, the guy who told us, hey, anytime we'll you know you guys want to play in Dallas or we're playing in Dallas, we want you to open for us. 
like grabs me and pulls me aside. Right, I'm talking like holding onto my shirt. He's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "You guys are you're following us around everywhere, and all this." He's like, "What is going on?" You're just and everywhere so, now. And so I told him, right, because like he's getting asked questions about it, and he doesn't know how to answer. And, you know, because they're asking him, why didn't you tell us these guys were on the show? And he's so, you know, the club owners are now kind of kind of busting him about it. So he's he's not happy. And I was like, here's what happened. I just called them all and asked them if they knew that we were coming. And they said no. And I said, well, we are, which is not a lie because we're coming. <laughs> so, you know, um, and they just like made a spot for us. And he just looked at me and shook his head and started cracking up. He's like, you're you're a genius. But if you ever do this again. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to ruin your careers. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to have Kevin come yeah, fight you. Yeah. I was like, okay, sweet. Um, so we get back to uh, to DFW. And then we did that for Firefly. Yeah, we did it, <laughs> we did it for them. We did it with, with a few other bands. We just never did it with Disciple again. Um, but when we get back to DFW, uh, some of the A&Rs from other, other places had seen us, and that's when we got our first call from Epic Records, um, who we eventually, they were the ones that courted us all the way up until the band just kind of dissipated. Mm. Um was was the guys from Epic, but they saw that and they were like, "You guys have been playing all these huge shows with all these big bands. How come we've never heard of you?" And we're like, "We don't know." Um, <laughs> it's basically basically because we've just been calling clubs and be like, "Hey, you know we're coming, right?" And they're like, "No, like, okay, good." And and that's yeah, we, we that, do tricks. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's really good. But no, we it was the uh, the old sales tactic of the assumptive close. Yeah. Like we mm. don't give them the you option as to, to whether or not we. Up. We just told them, hey, uh, we just want to make sure that you know that we're coming. Um, and then we would just show up and and do the show. We would pick the shows we wanted to go to, and we would show up and do them. And the club owners didn't have anybody to, to argue with. Um, and a lot of times in the afternoons, whenever you're calling, you're getting the sound tech. And the sound tech doesn't care. He's just like, all right, fine. What time, gonna be, yeah, what time are you going to be uh, be here? And we're like asking for you know, M&Ms and, and, and yeah. when loading is. And then that was, that was the gig. Yeah. So. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, my it, next, it was really effective. I, yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like it was. Well, my yeah. next question was going to be, you know, how do you guys get the kind of guests that you get? But based on that conversation, I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the, the the guest is a little different. I mean, you you send out most of the emails right now. I think for most of our guests. So yeah, we yeah, we actually rundown. followed a playbook yep. from uh, from your buddy. Yep. Um, that literally wrote a book on podcasting, uh, content-based networking is what it's called. Yep. Um, and in it, he he details you know, how to get guests is, is really three sentences, cold email, friendly. You know, uh, For instance, if I was emailing you, uh, typically was during email, was a lot during the pandemic that yeah. everyone was, yeah, yeah. was responding. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it was over Facebook messages or whatever, but um, it's a friendly, hey, Ricky, uh, I've got a podcast. I'd like to be on it. I'd like to talk about these things. Think you're fantastic. Let me know. Just short and sweet. Yeah. And the subject line is just podcast interview question mark. Yeah. And it it just tends to kind of work. I mean, I don't know what percentage it's, we'd put on it, but I, I do have a sixty percent. No, of response. I I do have a percentage on this because we've been what we are at our church. We produce other shows also, mm. um, in our in our little podcasting studio. So I do have a percentage on it. We are at a ninety two percent really return rate. Yeah, wow. But but, the but, ones but that does that but on. does that convert to an actual guest? Ninety two percent of the time we get a reply, and I think seventy something percent of the time we end up with a guest. That's really kind of what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, mm. but there's a lot of those people yeah, it works too. Well. Yeah, there's a lot of those people too that say, "Hey, you know what? Follow up with me in March." You know, mm. I'm I'm super busy. Follow up with me in March, and I'll, I would say of those, uh, the majority of them, because we do initiate the follow up, will get back to us and we'll do it. And then there have been a few that we've tried for years to get on. Colin Mockery is one. Yeah. And, uh, Dusty from, Slay. Yeah, Colin Mockery from Whose Line Is It Anyway? And his mm -hmm. manager just keeps kind of kicking the can down the road. He's like, oh, it's you guys again. Try us in September. <laughs> oh, it's you guys again. Try us in you know, January. But the thing is that we're diligent with the follow-ups. And one of these times um, he's going to tell land. us, hey, Colin's got new management. We're going to be like, hey, this guy told us we could have him on. So we're, was, we're showing up. Do you have a spot for us? <laughs> I was going to say, Colin Mockery is doing some uh, some interesting ad ad. Yeah. production right now so yeah, yeah. Uh, i think you might be getting close <laughs> uh, let's hope let's hope right he's become really active since the what was the name of that show that he did what was all the comedians like last in a house? one laughing 
Yeah, it was, it was him was and, uh, was and Catherine so O'Hara and Tom Green. Was it Catherine O'Hara? Uh, not Catherine O'Hara. What's her name? I don't know. Uh, yeah, to- the big ones were Tom Green. Uh huh. Dave Foley. Yep. Uh, there was a. Bu- it was Canadians. So there was a, a bunch of Canadian <laughs> uh, comedians. Um, and they get together and they have, I don't remember what it was. It was four hours or something that you cannot laugh. And this yeah. is the funniest people in Canada <laughs> of which are some of our funniest comedians in, 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 uh, true in North America. I, yeah, I could, I wouldn't be able to do it with Colin Mockery and Dave Foley and, uh, D- did uh, who ended up winning spoiler? It was Tom Green. Okay. I think yeah. no, no, no. Colin Mockery. He, he it, bested, it was down. It was he down to Tom too. Green. Yeah, he, got, he, he won got his out. own show. Mm-hmm. He used Tom Green's bits against him. <laughs> oh, that would do it. <laughs> yep, because because comedians that love nothing no, love nothing less than having their own stuff done against them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, well, I I don't I don't want to ask you the unfair question of who was your favorite guest, but I will ask you this: That's not unfair. You don't think it's unfair? <laughs> no. So well, then I'll ask. Who has been your favorite guest? Ricky, that's really not a fair question. <laughs> They're all so great. I, I struggle with this one because yeah. I've got like maybe top five or ten. I, I don't, number one would be difficult. It's, it kind of depends because it our, might be our right show. Or... Yeah, the, but I think Mike is probably tops for both of us. The guy mm. we were talking about earlier because he was such a kind of a hero we of both, ours we in both radio. We listened to him growing up on the radio our entire yeah. lives. So him coming in studio and... That's, Being our friend is that's been pretty an big. unbelievable thing that we've gotten to do. Yeah, but I I think too like our show is so you know everybody that's listened to it that's been like in podcasting they're like man you guys uh, y'all are great interviewers and we're like oh thank you and they're like you're you're handsome and funny um, and you know, super marketable tell they, they tell us I all of these know. really nice things the, the the biggest criticism that we get is they're like you don't have a niche right and that that's yeah. one of the things like if we were to take our show and make it just about you know marvel comics or something like that yeah um what we've heard from most of most of these people that do this for a living you're like your show would blow up if you if you had a niche but really we tell everybody we have the most niche uh show on the planet because we basically just make it for the two people that are behind the microphones and and don't really care about you know, any, anybody i mean obviously we love our listeners and and uh, have a great uh, fan group and stuff that we that we talk yeah, to. Yeah, we would it's love really for you cool. to follow us. Yeah, yeah, follow us, subscribe <laughs> to our channel, so we but, get monetized but, and, and but, can do. But this. you're right, we we do it because it's fun. Yeah, but the but because of that, right? Like you almost need like our favorite guest probably needs to fit into a genre. Like our favorite guest when it comes to yeah, true yeah. crime, right? Was mm. it the the guy who committed the second largest bank robbery in U.S. history? Was it the, you know, David the lady Gant. whose whose mom, uh, or the guy whose whose mom came on because he created the dark web? You know, like is it is it that? Is it your? This is Ross Ulbricht. You know your favorite uh, your favorite author, and then is it you know New York Times bestsellers, or when it comes to to apologetics, comedians, is it musicians, are a ton of fun. is it comedians? Yeah. So so that question for our show is is complicated is because complicated. there are so mm. many different things that that we look at. But I think um, I think Reiner's probably our tops. Who do you think the wildest interview is that we've ever done? Well, there was my friend who was intoxicated <laughs> that, we weren't, that we weren't that we weren't planning okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really early on in the show right? we're trying to figure out what our show is going to be. Yeah. And, uh, and so we tested a lot of things by I, like, I, talking to our friends. Yeah. There was a friend of mine that was wildly into conspiracy. So, theories. so I said, Hey, so I want to come it. on, come on, uh-huh. zoom in. This is during the pandemic. Let's, let's yep. do, let's talk conspiracy theories. Yeah, and we he were going to, so, we were going to call him on the show. We were going to so call him with Alice. Anticipation and, Right, because he was fear. gonna, yeah, because he was gonna take us down the rabbit hole. So we had, we had this name. But he got so drunk that it was unusable. <laughs> yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was so. And what was, what was crazy about it is, and he was gonna wear a luchador mask. Like there was a whole thing. Yeah. So the first time we interviewed him, our our recording crashed, and that one but was a good one. It was great. He did phenomenal. So we were like, dude, you did such a good job. You know, why don't you come back on? And he's and he's into conspiracy theories, so, right. he, so he was like, "You can just tell me, like it wasn't good, and that's why you don't want to." No, air we it. I was like, like no, 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 it really didn't it, record. It, yeah, like, like well, we, we loved it. Um, but he was so in his own so, head yeah, about it. So he comes back on, and the first recording was great. That, that and one the was second wild. times he comes on, he was just the most loaded of any <laughs> human that I've ever like. He, I hope you can use this. <laughs> it was. And it was so – he was asking us questions that were 
very inappropriate. <laughs> like, oh man, very funny. Um, you know, what, what, uh, just what, questions about men's health that no man should ask another man, especially not just like what, an open forum. What, what, else, what else was a was a wheels off one? Um, so that one was that one really was when I, when I think a while that I, that's yeah yeah um, Alice was was certainly one yeah. of the ones that that was the craziest. Uh, getting to talk to to David Gant, the guy we mentioned before, who's mm-hmm. the bank robber. That one was pretty wheels off. That one was mm-hmm. just bizarre because yeah, know, he he's... literally stole twenty million or it was not eighteen. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's eight. You know. <laughs> and and he's talking. We're like, all right, so would you do it again? He's like, well, let me just be honest. When I stuffed forty thousand dollars down my pants and went to Mexico for six months, that was the best time I ever had in my whole life. <laughs> okay, this is not really like the reformed prisoner story that. <laughs> You know, we thought we were getting, um, but yeah, that that one that one was pretty crazy. Uh, some of the comedians we've done, I think Carrie Pomeroli was one of the ones that sent Carrie. us for the biggest loop. You know, as far as just like wheels off, because like her her ex husband was living if you in want her a garage. wild interview. Get yeah. Carrie Pomeroli. Yeah, her ex husband was living in her garage and just like showed up in the middle of the interview and started like. I, I giving remember commentary. that episode. <laughs> yeah, and and she was talking to us about how like. Uh, her somebody got a picture of her feet and put it on a website for people with foot fetishes and she found out about it and um that was it it took a weird so we go from talking about her devotional book to like oh yeah also my feet ended up on a foot fetish site we're like what yeah so that one that one was pretty wild um i'm sure there there've been you know over the course of two and a half years of doing this we've had over 100 interviews There's a lot yeah so, so it's just force and fire guys were pretty awesome. Yeah, they they were yeah. great. They're always really weird too because they got random stuff laying around, you know. So if you haven't watched Forged and Fire on the History Channel, these are guys that are like historic weapons recreation specialists, and and they're always you know, armed. Yeah, all like one <laughs> of them. You know, the the most recent interview we did, we were talking to the guy about you know something happened on the Prince's Bride and that sword fight, and he's like, yeah, I mean they're using rapiers, and you wouldn't have a rapier, you'd have one of these, and he just pulls a cutlass that's just sitting on the table in front of him. Just off and like and unsheathed it. Makes the it. perfect sounds. Yeah, too. It, it does. And he's you know, and then there's been other times where they've like literally walked off of camera to go rummage around in boxes to go find stuff that they had, and you it it sounds like a like a bit from a Looney Tunes cartoon. It's just, just like noises and tanks and hammers and all this stuff, right? and they come back with like this tiny little knife. And this is what I was what I was talking about. <laughs> Fantastic. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. That, that that's a difficult question. I think yeah. all of those probably fit in that category. The wildest. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. Well, you mentioned a couple people that you've tried to get repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. For is sure. there someone that you're like, this is, this is the one guy we've wanted since day one, and we haven't landed him yet? You know, I, I have an answer to this one. Yeah, go this for is it. the one that I'm saddest about. Oh, I know who this is going to be because we're never going to get him. We're never going to get him. Never going to get him. Is uh, Kevin Conroy? Mm-hmm. I. Oh, uh, yeah. He was when we were dreaming of what's the number one for me, Kevin Conroy. Mm. And and I will I will reveal now, right? Um, we had paid on cameo. Yeah. So I I spent the and my wife is gonna kill me if she listens to this. <laughs> so I I paid the hundred and fifty dollars on cameo. Oh no! To get something from Kevin Conroy for your birthday last year. Right. And in it, it said, you know, we really want you to come on our podcast. Well, he ends up not doing the recording because it didn't happen. And t- the reason my wife is coming because I didn't ask permission to use the 150 bucks. Right. Yeah. And it's on a credit card that's only in my name. Right. So it was totally like <laughs> stealth. It's, it's, it's Lucas's it fun money. Incognito <laughs> mode. Right. And so um, but it didn't get made in time. And they had shot me an email that said it wasn't going to get made. And so I'd never brought it up. I've never mentioned it to you. But we there was a Did legit a attempt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a legit attempt to get Kevin Conroy. Like money was was put up in order to do that. And I figured, you know what? Even if we got like just the birthday shout out, but now you know, seeing how he passed and what he was dealing with, it was probably like right in that yeah. time where yeah. you know his mm. um, his illness was. was sort and of and at then its Norm McDonald would have been another one, but there's yeah, I mean, he's yeah there so, was no yeah. way we were going to. Both of those guys are just yeah. out of this world. Yeah, Colin Mockery, I think is is probably one of the ones that's still up at the tops. Um, Carl Truman was one that we tried for over a year to get on and, and he was really great. And, you know, one of the things about him that was so fun is his books and stuff that he writes, um, are very, very, very heady, uh, especially when it comes to like cultural apologetics. And so we did get to have, uh, a really great sort of, 
um, intellectual conversation with him. But the dude has such a quick wit and mm-hmm. is so fun um, that we when we entered into our last segment of our show, which is called Controlled Rowdiness, where we just ask people like rapid fire questions and stuff like that. He that was really where where he came to life. And, you know, Nancy Piercy was kind of the same. I was, was going to say there, there's yeah. a whole section of, you know, kind of one for you, one for me. Yeah. That we we could say. Yep. That these are the smarty pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nancy Piercy. Uh, Carl uh, Truman, Stephen Mansfield, Stephen Mansfield. That yeah. that when you interview them, uh, first off, they're a fantastic interview. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. But I have never felt more stupid <laughs> than yeah. Than there's talking something to some about of these that. Brilliant people for sure. Yeah. And I go, I shouldn't be talking to you. I definitely have like the imposter syndrome a little bit of. Uh, I have no place at this table. Yeah. With none these, with these brilliant minds. Well, and they're so sweet. Yeah. Like, like that's what they're I think gracious they're so gracious and... about how dumb we are <laughs> that I don't think people really know. Like the very first time we had Steven Mansfield on, he was the first like heavy intellectual that we had on. It was really intimidating um, because the week before we'd had David Baker on, who was our first like big guest. And then the next week we had Steven Mansfield on it. So we're See, coming David off Baker's of this, on my level. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Baker's just a dude, yeah, right? He, he's he just motorcycles, just fun, um, making swords and dancing. Dancing, yeah, and so uh, so Stephen Mansfield comes on, and we're having this like really high level. Stephen Mansfield, New York Times bestselling author of like nine hundred yeah. books, and and so he's he's talking to us about you know Christianity and men's mental health and the importance of you know building a band of brothers and why the suicide rate for men, especially Christian men, is so high mm. and all of this stuff. And he's going over it and he's like going way in depth on it. And Danley and I have a Slack channel, <laughs> and we're just like. We asked him one question and he answered like the next five. And in our Slack channel is just us typing back and forth to each other. Oh crap! I have nothing left to say. <laughs> you know, like, like what do we do? Um, but he he worked. He was very kind to us. Yeah. And when we were like, uh, we would kind of come up with a follow up question, and then he would take it and do something brilliant with a really dumb question and make us sound super smart. And he's been on the show several times, and and will be again. Um, in uh, in January February because I, he does a lot of political stuff so he'll kind of be think, talking to us about some I of think that. he's my friend too Stephen Mansfield I don't remember if I asked him yeah I think so I think you did ask Stephen Mansfield okay. if he would be your friend every now and then I remember to ask our guests if they will if officially be, be my friend yeah <laughs> so there's some it's never backfired but there have no. been a few where we're just like I don't know if I want this person I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I need this person as a friend. <laughs> Well, as I recall, you have been yeah. called yummy. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Danley's oh, big scoreboard. Oh, man, I tell everybody about that. You wouldn't even you, – you think I've been telling everyone about being tricked into joining church and then I'm basically a pastor. Everybody knows that Leanne Morgan has called us yummy. Yes. Well, you specifically because you have asked. Mm-hmm. So in our in our last segment, for those I who tell don't everyone listen, that I'm yummy, and Leanne Morgan has said it. Has we, she told you that? B- right. So we're asking these rapid fire questions, and then if it's getting boring for if the show ever gets boring for Dan Lee, oh, I hate that for any reason. Like the wheels are coming off, and I am like rolling my eyes. I'm like, oh crap, this is just not good for us. Um, I mean, it's going to be great content, but like it's going to come with a lot of apologies from me to whoever it was. <laughs> come in like. Black yeah. Adam. So you come with in like the, Black Adam. With the just emotion like, of a rock. Yeah. With the emotion of a of a rock and the need for <laughs> Kevin Hart. Yeah. Yeah. So um so anyway, Danley will in this segment, he'll ask a lot of people, uh, have you ever been called yummy by Leanne Morgan? <laughs> and they're just like, What? Like it just comes out of nowhere and that says, Oh, well I have. And that's yeah. it. And then all so of my family on to the knows. next question. Yeah. All of my friends know. It's ridiculous, but it's funny. Strangers I mean, I ask them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was another one that was wheels off. Speaking of, of strangers, is the Tea Time Crimes ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were wheels off too. Yep, that was a great episode. I really yeah, enjoyed that episode. They're phenomenal, man, uh, and their podcast and is, they're the female really versions of off. us, which is interesting. kind of yeah, yeah. They've got real <laughs> similar energy to us, which is um, I feel so sorry for their husbands, Brad and Chris. Yeah, just, just as sorry for Brad and Chris as I do for Kirsten and Heather. <laughs> they have to put up with it. So yeah, well. Before I let you guys go, let me yeah. ask you two last questions. Sure. And one is definitely derived from what you were just talking about, mm-hmm. uh, your rapid-fire questions. Oh, gosh. You've got 60 seconds. Tell oh, me a man. story. Oh, Aliens man. are going to destroy the world <laughs> if you don't Perfect. tell them a story uh, that makes them smile. Uh, what's the story? you got 60 seconds. Go. 
who's who's this question directed towards? Cheers. Oh crap! I well, obviously, know. I would tell him the story of of Jesus, but like we we say that the gospel's off the table. So is the gospel off the table here? The gospel's off the table. Okay, crap! The gospel's off. Okay, uh, so I'm setting my timer. My sixty seconds starts now. All right. So this one time, I uh, I was dating this girl. It was 2009. I just got off of a really big tour where I was playing with a big pop group as a, as a fill in, um, and I was dating this girl. She was a student abroad in Spain. So I decided I'm going to go surprise her on Valentine's Day. I fly to Spain from Dallas on Valentine's Day, and I've got uh, a, a stuff with me in order to fly back home because the day that I get home, i got to go play a country gig at this place called Billy Bob's. We have this incredible weekend. Um, we go – we sneak into a play in the middle of Spain to see the flamenco version of Carmen. Uh, we go to all of these really romantic museums. I'm sleeping on the floor in this little side room that they have because we're both believers and we're trying to be good about all that. On the way to the airport, uh, about 30 seconds before I go check out or uh, check into my flight, she dumps me. (laughs) So she dumps me on the way to the airport. I am just like devastated. I'm sort of in this haze. I go to check in. My flight has been canceled, and I've got to chase her down in the middle of the airport and stay with her for three more days, cancel my (laughs) gigs. And I was heartbroken and devastated and wrote a bunch of really awesome songs about it. There you go. That's the story. (laughs) Wow. Pretty good. Now that There's is... a lot more details to that story. Like she, so I go and I run. My my nickname since I was a kid has been Pookie, yeah. and so like I ran her down in the airport, right? Because they cancel my flight, and I'm like, dude, do anything. Like, put me. Where are you going next? Talking to the flight attendant, and he's like Je- Johannesburg, and I was like, stick me in a box. I'm not staying here with this chick that <laughs> just dumped me on the way to the airport. So I got to run her down in the airport. And she turns and she looks at me. She like flips her hair and she looks at me. She goes, Pookie. And she puts her hand over her heart. This dramatic wench. <laughs> she puts her hand over her heart. She looks at me and she's like, Pookie, don't make this any harder than it has to be. And I looked at her. I was like, my flight got canceled. We're getting on the train. Like, let's go. And she was like, you're kidding me. I was like, no. Uh-uh. But we we found out. Uh, we found a way to tolerate each other for the next three days while I was stuck in Spain. And um, do, do, rest is do aliens use the standard definition of 60 seconds <laughs> i i waited until i said go and i hit the post i went from 55 to 55 mm, pretty good. i'm on it i'm That's on pretty it. good thank you good yeah, job. I, mean, I didn't have anything so i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the not earth, criticizing I'm the just, earth is saved <laughs> thank goodness and, th- and now the aliens want to give me tapas and more details so <laughs> yes um yeah because Dude, there, i don't, I don't other, have you ever heard like, this story yeah 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 because yeah. one of the other things that happened is like i had to i walked her to school because she was, like I said, she was studying abroad. I walk her to school, and then I'm walking back, and I'm just done, like mentally, emotionally, physically, like I'm spent. I'm having to call the band that I was supposed to play with that night to do this gig and let them know that I'm not coming in. And and I'm in a pair of black ostrich skin boots, the tightest pair of Levi 501 <laughs> button-ups known to man in 2009. <laughs> Um, I'm wearing a black pearl snap shirt because I'm getting off the airplane and going right to, you know, the gig at Billy Bob's. Um, and I've got this huge belt buckle on that's the seal of the state of Texas. So I'm walking back to her apartment. I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to go into this little pub and I'm going to sit down and just relax. And as soon as I walk in, there's this French guy that looks at me now. Barack Obama had just taken his oath of office in January. George Bush had been been put out. They hated George Bush over in Spain. They were like burning effigies of him in the town square, literally, like while we were there. So I walk into this pub, and this French guy looks at me, and he goes, "Ha ha ha, George Bush!" And <laughs> my like, I lost it. Like I, I was done. You're and just the crying. Only, well, the only thing that came to mind was the French taunting. What does lost it mean? Lo- like lost it. Like completely Laughing. lost my cool. Okay. So I look at him, and the only thing that came to my mind was the French taunting yeah. from Monty Python. <laughs> so I immediately just like yell at him because, like in America, the loudest one wins. It doesn't really depend so much on is your argument any good. So I just start yelling at him. Your mother was a hamster, and your mm-hmm. father smelled of elderberries. And now he's like away. yelling I at me. Be forced to taunt you in second French, time, right? Uh. And so like we're going back and forth, and I'm not even paying attention to the fact that there are other people that are watching this. Like this place is full because it's siesta time in Spain. And this dude at the end, he like bangs his fist down on the table and he gets right up in my face. And no, I, no lie. I look him right and we're like nose to nose. And I go, (laughs) (laughs) and that's, that's how I ended. And I just, I did that. Very Um, effective. And he, he spat on my shoe and then he walked out of the door 
And that's when it dawns on me that there's like 40 people in this pub <laughs> that just witnessed what I would say is probably one of the lower moments in my life of self-control. And immediately the guy behind the bar starts clapping. <laughs> and it's like, well done. What the heck? And so I sit down by these British guys that are there. They ended up buying me, um, buying me lunch. And the bartender is, uh, he's now a friend of mine. He was a guy from Sweden. And fun fact about him, he was the stunt double for Vega in the Street Fighter movies. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Fascinating I think, life. I think the aliens were so entertained that they're, <laughs> you tricked them into joining Earth. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to help us work on a defense system. Yeah. yeah, great. Absolutely. Well, guys, it has been great having you on the show. Uh, tell has. all the listeners, uh, viewers, where can they find you guys? You get, you got this one. <laughs> uh, you can uh, you can check Rev us out Rep. at uh, Rev, Rep Pod Rev Rep Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Reverend Reprobate on YouTube, and uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all that stuff. I should have been prepared um, with all of our Reverend tags. Reverend and, and Reprobate. Uh, we use Linktree that has all of that stuff that's that's yep. in there and. It auto populates it easy for us because we get we're getting old, man. Our also, think, to, I think you can still bad. go to baconoffice dot com. <laughs> <laughs> can you go to baconoffice dot com and find I'm it? Trying it, yeah. Try baconoffice dot com. Well, well, and we'll I will definitely put links down in the show notes. Uh, Sweet. Yep. To baconoffice.com. Yep, baconoffice dot com <laughs> redirects to our website. <laughs> I'm just gonna put baconoffice dot com. Call Perfect. it good. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it has been fantastic having you on the show. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, Rick. thanks for having blast. us on. It was great talking to Lucas and Dan Lee and hear what's happening in their podcast. If you want to check it out or to follow them on social media, check out the links in the show notes below. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, you know, click, just click all those links, whatever they are. Uh, that way you can keep up with us and know anytime we put out new content. And you can find all of our social links, links to our YouTube channel and our online store at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. If you enjoy the show and want to help even more, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. We've changed all of our Patreon levels, and every level has great benefits and makes a huge difference in the ministry we're able to do. Supporters will also get to hear exclusive stories of believers we are serving around the world through our ministry partners. To check it out or partner with us, go to patreon.com slash christiannerdsunite or christiannerdsunite.com and click on support in the menu. Before you go, I do want to leave you with this blessing from Ephesians 3. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how high and how long and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We'll see you next week. Blessings. Hey.